All right, so you guys are in for a treat. This is pretty much an entire look at a full gym real estate planning call I did with a client. This individual has an existing lease. They are located in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Very profitable, good gym. Now they want to expand. And we're, he was coming to me wanting to know how to have that conversation and negotiate it with the landlord. This is a good old boy landlord. He is not interested in this individual bringing in representation to negotiate a lease extension and additional square footage. So I am coaching my client, his name is Corey. He was nice enough to allow me to publish this for you guys so you can learn from it on how to handle that landlord. So I go through an entire LOI and all the negotiating points and how I would recommend he positions it to the landlord. We also then talk about subleases. Corey's got a great opportunity to sublease and he didn't know how to price his sublease agreement with this other vendor. So we talk about that. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy this. If you have any commercial real estate projects, you want to lease or buy a building, you want to get on a call, please head over to jimrealestate.co. Go ahead and book a discovery call. We'll get on there and talk shop. Otherwise, enjoy this conversation. How are you, brother? Man, I'm good. I'm good. You know, Thanksgiving week, things are busy, got a lot going, but like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Well, cool, dude. Well, listen, let's, let's go ahead and get into this. After look, I've been looking over everything here. So, and I, I'm going to show you what I've been working on here. This okay. is how we, this is how I would formally do this. Be like, you wouldn't have to send it to him like this, but this is an LOI, right? This is what it would formally look like. Essentially, it just gets down all the deal points. And the point, the purpose of this is A, so the tenant and the landlord can make sure that all the big issues they've negotiated before getting the lawyers involved. Because once you get the lawyer involved, the, the, the meters run it, right? Um, yeah. But for you, you've already got a relationship with this guy. So you could essentially take this or something similar and be like, hey, man, I would like, I want to I want to lease this. I would like to combine my two leases. I'd like to dissolve my existing lease, which is a year early, and then have a have an aggregate lease of both suites combined. So it would be a lease for, would you have suite numbers on there or are they just numbers? You're 14 or you're something of two. And then, so- Go ahead. So I'm 1402 because I'm the only tenant in my entire building. Every other building you see in this complex has two tenants. So those are A and B. A and B. Which one are you wanting? See what see where it says Tennessee BG BJJ Academy. Yep. The the right side of that that there's nothing on that is 1400 A. So you're back here. Yeah, that I got that whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So you want that plus this. Correct. Okay. So the, I mean, that's, uh, that's incredibly helpful. So I like for stuff to be educational too. So I want you to use your critical thinking as a business owner. What becomes your biggest vulnerability by taking half, taking down half of this building that you have not had to deal with yet? Immediate additional overhead and operating expenses that I don't have the revenue for on day one. Sure. That's a great one. The other one that I'm concerned of from a lease perspective, you've been able to be an obnoxious motherfucker. You've been able yeah. to clang and bang your fucking heart out for years. Well, I get that there's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu and they likely won't care. Yeah. But in two years, that might not be there. Right. And you could have a fucking whatever, an office or something in which you being there is a huge fucking problem. So what you want to do with this lease, especially with this one, is we would bring in what is called the right to quiet enjoyment. And I'll write this into the LOI. But essentially it says, hey, listen, and you tell the landlord, hey, man, I've been in a standalone. I've been able to make my noise and do my thing. However, if I'm taking down this suite, I realize I will be sharing the wall with another tenant. And I don't want to cause you any headaches, Mr. Landlord. Because it's not just the noise, it's the vibration, because you guys are on the same slab. Yeah. So the reason most CrossFit gyms get evicted is because they, 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 uh, they don't get the landlord to sign off in the lease that they have the right to quiet enjoyment. I mean, we, and then in the lease, you have to say, we are going to cause noise and vibration. You have to make that acknowledge because that is everybody's complaint. So yep. if Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu leaves and another tenant comes in, you're already there. The landlord already signed a lease saying you have the right to quiet enjoyment and your business use is known to create noise and vibration. And he has to tell that to the next tenant and be like, hey, listen, you guys, you're taking over my old Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu spot. Just so you know, I've got this Rampage gym next door. They may make noise, but it, I mean, if you guys don't want it, that's fine. But I got to give you the heads up ahead of time versus if you don't have that language. 
someone can come in, and if they have him sign a right of quiet enjoyment, but you didn't, you get evicted, not them. Gotcha. So it's one of these like it's one of these things you see more and more often, especially with CrossFit, barbell, group strength, and conditioning gyms. You want to make sure we have that language in there. No need for you to have it on the the main location. I'm not worried about that, but for this additional. Yeah. Now, on this additional, I know you also mentioned doing more like personal training and less, it seems like less clang and bang. Yes, absolutely. Okay. But in the instance, because I mean, I dude, I've got orange theories who have gotten threatened for eviction and they're not, they're not dropping weights, but it's yeah. just bodies bouncing and moving around is just, is what creates vibration on a single slab building, which is exactly what this is. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's already helpful. Like I, cause I've never thought about that or heard the yep. terms. So one of the things we would go in here and we put in permitted use of the premises shall be for group fitness and personal training, which is known to cause noise and vibration, which shall be further defined in the lease. And this is where, again, you know, the landlord is generally the one to create the lease. Okay. He, it's on his dime. Generally, what's advised. So if you were a, a multi-million dollar enterprise, you were a metabolic, you were CrossFit Inc., you were fucking Orange Theory or F45. You would then review, you would have your lawyer look at that lease and you would, your lawyer would redline it. Redlining it simply means, hey, I don't like this language here for my clients. Can we agree upon this? Because one thing I can't do, I'm not, I don't have a law degree. I cannot create leases. That is a legal binding document. What I'm doing here is an LOI. This is a non-legal binding document. So you'll see there's a signature page, but it means nothing. Like literally you could sign this and then tell the guy to go fuck his mother and rip it up and it doesn't mean anything. Okay. So it'll even say here, this LOI, blah, blah, blah. No party shall be bound except until the lease is signed. Okay. This is a non-binding document. It's simply meant to make sure that landlord and tenant are on the same page. And then the lawyers have to do less questions because they already know what to write up. Okay. So I will put that in here, but I would advise, you know, again, you talk to the landlord and you let them know, like, hey, man, I just want to have some language in the lease to make sure that in this new spot, I have the right to quiet enjoyment, right? And I'll go ahead and I'll add a line in here that I'll create for you and I'll further describe what that is in this. And I'll be sending this over to you later today. Gotcha. And then, it's, so is, is this something that is like, I schedule a in-person meeting with him, I have this print and I hand it to him. Is that that yeah, practice? And again, like, again, it, because I'm not actually representing you, because we don't have an agreement signed on that, I would just, you would, I would, you would just take essentially everything I've done here and it, you can just copy and paste most of it. Like some of this stuff, like you don't have, like the property, like this is really formal. This is like the formal way that I would do it when dealing with the landlord and his listing agent and his lawyer. Okay. Right. For you, you've got this very informal relationship with it. I would just take all the important pieces and kind of copy and paste it, but you don't need to have all this like formal bullshit in here. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. But uh, yeah. again, ideally like hand it to him in person and not just shoot him an email. Well, they, I mean, so I, here's my thing. I'd be like, Hey, listen, you know, I let him know, but Hey, I'm super excited about taking over that additional spot. I wanted to make sure, cause this would be a more significant lease. And I have, you know, I wanted to talk about lining up the two leases. So they're not crooked. And because I will have to be sharing a wall, I'll be in a multi-tenant building. There's some additional things in there. So I jotted down some deal points for this new lease that I'd like to talk to you about. And you send this to him preliminary so he can review it. That way you don't catch him off guard. Okay. And then you guys have an in-person meeting about it to discuss. Okay, gotcha. I'm going to send this to you in a Word document so you can edit this however you want. My recommendation is if you could combine respectively 6,060 and 2,225 suite for a combined total of 8,310. So again, I'm essentially aligning both like two units, one lease. Gotcha. All right. I do recommend that. The only thing I would tell you is if like the only thing I would advise a client on to separate the two, if you had any doubt that you couldn't make the other space work. If you have doubt in your head that they're not going to be able to make money in that locate in that in that additional space, then you would want two separate leases since you're kind of rolling the dice and you don't you're not fully bought in. Like you have doubt. If you have no doubt, you're like, no, no matter what, I need this extra space and it's right across my fucking right across the way. Like this is way better than moving, then you're good. Right? Yeah. Like then you're so fine. Let, let me ask you this. W would there be any downside to having two leases that 
let's say he allowed me to like restart two leases that started on the same day and I paid the payment on the same day. None. Zero. So you're talking to you want to paper each of them individually? Yeah, because it's like truth be told, like, sure, I'm very confident. But if in a year I'm like, well, fuck, we're making no more profit than we were. And I have these extra expenses. Maybe I should cut it. Like, so if they were separate and that gave me that opportunity, like that'd probably be better. Perfect. So then what we would just do is we would just have two of these, two copies of this, two LOIs. So these LOIs will literally be carbon copies except for the address, the rental amount, because they're going to have different rental amounts because you're obviously, you're currently at dollars and two cents a square foot on 6,000 square feet, okay? The new square footage, you're at 1344 a square foot. Why? Well, because in real estate, it's an inverse relationship. The less the square footage, the higher the rate. Think about like a warehouse. Like I got a client looking at a 30,000 square foot warehouse. He's paying way less per square foot because there's 30 fucking thousand square feet than someone looking yeah. at a 3,000 square foot re warehouse. Make sense? Gotcha. Yeah. What if he doesn't, what if he decides, I don't want to deal with rewriting your current lease. You can sign this new one, but I'm not adjusting the other one. Here's the deal. You have leverage. Okay. Your leverage is that he doesn't have to worry about it. I'm a landlord, right? I own my building. I have my gym in it. I mean, I put a brewery in it. Now there's a golf company going in. Like it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing when you know your tenant is going to make you money every month. Because if you, and when you're in the business of being an investor, right? When you, when you buy a property and then you put tenants in it, not your own business, but tenants, you're now an investor. And as an investor, the only way you make money is if the tenant pays his fucking rent. I don't know how much of my story you've heard. Like I, you know, I have the 10,000, 3,000, 10,500 square foot building in a beautiful section of downtown Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. I retired. I've been watching for a while. Yeah. Okay. I put my brewery in there, a brewery, not mine, a brewery. Those cunts failed in three years. I lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm in a $3 million lawsuit with their entity in Texas. Like the, that's the worst because guess what? Not only if the tenant fails, you, you spent a bunch of money in TI, but now you don't have any money coming in. And if you're like me, he probably, your guy doesn't have a mortgage on these properties. I couldn't find an existing, I do. So it's like, I need income coming in. So now the biggest thing is like, you're now the building's down. I mean, it's not making any money. So who's paying the mortgage me? So like your landlord, while he's not hurting because the bank's coming after him, okay? Because he's got a mortgage. It's still not producing the income. He likes you. He might not be the friendliest dude, but he likes that you pay your shit on time. And if you're going to take up more square footage, he like, he'd much rather have a reliable tenant than take the risk on a guy who wants to fucking do red fucking infrared saunas and take a gamble on some new concept, right? Yeah. So I think you actually have good leverage here to say, hey, listen, I need to grow. I can't. And if you position is I can't stay in my current location. I would need something larger. I was planning on not renewing my lease. But now that this suite's available, now I can stay. So now he sees it as the, the problem he's about to have is, oh, fuck, Corey's about to leave. And that dude's been money with his rent every month. I like Corey. I wish I had 10 Corys. But now he has a fear of loss. Remember, human beings are motivated by a fear of loss more than they are by gain. So if he's like, well, he could rent it out to someone else. Then no, no, no. Do you know what he has to he? In order for him to rent it out, he has to list it. Even if he doesn't list it with a broker, he has to list it with a sign and then sit there and fucking wait. And I'll tell you this, shit doesn't move in the fourth quarter. He'll be sitting on his ass until spring at the earliest. So if I'm you, I think you're in a great position to like, hey man, I would like to have two separate leases and I don't want to be crooked. So I want to lie, time them up. So I'd like to dis like take the lease that we have currently, dissolve it, and start it fresh for five years or seven or whatever you want. And my same at the other building at the same time. So they're running concurrently. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm recording this as well. If you want a copy of it, just uh, let me know. I'll Sally get a copy of it too. If you want to review any of it later, um, she'll also send you a bunch of notes and from the call as well. Cool. But perfect. Yeah. So I'm recommending probably, I mean, I, unless you want to go longer, I would tell you to lock in for at least five at a minimum. Okay. All right, because you're well below, you're below fair market value there. You're paying a good, you got a, you got a good rate.
right? Gotcha. So I don't know what your long-term plans are. You know, are you looking to buy something? You're going to get out of the industry. You're going to retire. I don't know what, I don't know what the long-term plans are for you, but without knowing anything, you know, five years is, is probably kind of my go-to suggestion without knowing what you want to do in the next five to 10 years. Renewal options, two renewal options each for three years. So that would give you a total potential of 11 years. All right. You don't have to renew those. Yeah, they're available. All right. There's two dates that are important, lease commencement and rent commencement. Lease commencement is the day you pay a security deposit, which you won't pay, and he hands you the keys. That does not mean rent starts. In this scenario, the way I'm going to dock it up is I'm going to talk about, like I was looking at this list of the stuff that you want to, to do, like the improvements you'd like to make. I agree with you. Hold on a second, I'm going to shut this door. All right, so I agree with you. I don't think this dude's going to give you any TI. There's no reason for him to do it. There really isn't. Short of the, you know, short of it being something that wasn't up the code or it failed an inspection. Now, do you, you believe there's anything like that in, in the new suite or your current suite that would fail an inspection by the fire department? No, I don't believe so. Okay, great. That's the only thing that would give you leverage. If that's not there, I believe you're going to, kind of like, you know, how they upfronted the 10k when you first started off yeah and then you paid it back well you've been in business now over a decade he's he's expecting you to have your own fucking piggy bank to fucking do this like he's probably not going to pay for it himself right. so but the, the the swap would be like if you're like hey uh, you know i you'd like better lighting so if you want to you know you you hired a company or you you know you just rented a scissor lift for the day and you went and got leds and replaced all your ballasts and your lights with leds that'd be a really good aesthetic change for you He's not going to do that. Lighting is almost always the tenant's responsibility. Okay. Gotcha. Um, the new garage door. So like one of those nice glass garage doors. He yeah. won't be mad that you're going to do it. It actually improves his property. Yeah. It improves now, the facade. Ironically, this dude, he's interesting. So my current building, you saw it on Google Maps. The back of the building is completely fenced in. Behind the building is the Greenway trail system and a river and trees. So there's nothing back there. And my current garage door has three small windows that barely let any light in. Last summer, I tried to see, could I get three of these center panels all the way across windowed out? He was concerned from a security standpoint that people could now see into the building. And I'm like, there's windows on the front of the building you can look in. So like, he was asked backwards. I was thinking aesthetic and light. He was thinking, oh, people can see inside the building. Like, well, there's already a window. And let him know. Be like, hey, listen, my business keeps zero cash on hand. And if you want to rob me, you better have some strong friends and a fucking pickup truck. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, he, I, you're right. He's He seems like a squirrely old dude. So let him know. Be like, well, security, again, security is not his concern. Mm -hmm. That's your concern. That should be like, security is my concern. But my other concern right now is com is me continuing to generate revenue. And right now, what's very fashionable in fitness is retail locations with glass light and natural light. It's more inviting. It just brings better energy to the space. You don't feel like you're in a dungeon. I need that to continue to keep up with my fancier competitors in the area. And you let them know point blank. It is going to improve the aesthetic. I'll get, get the doors approved by him. Like he might not want a certain color trim or something like that. Get yeah. it approved and you will likely pay for it. But that's why I want to get you at least 90 days. So this is rent commencement. When you start paying rent, 90 days after lease commencement. So I get you three months of free rent. So you think about how much money you'd spend in that rent. That's essentially money he's giving you, quote unquote, that you yeah. can apply towards buying, you know, getting the doors installed or whatever else you want to do to the space. Yeah, okay. perfect. All right. So 90 days. And again, so if he's sitting across from you or he's like, hey, so what's with this 90 days of free rent? Be like, listen, and this is where you want to have a quote. This is a very big thing I need you to write down. You always want to come with solutions, not problems. When you say, hey, listen, I've gotten quotes, the best quote, I can get this, these guys, I had them out to the, you know, you can literally just probably even bring those guys out to the exterior of the fucking building. They probably don't even have to get inside of it to get you a good quote. But I called the overhead door company or whatever it is, and it's going to cost, you know, four grand to get this door installed. So I'm going to put in four grand there. I'm going to spend a thousand bucks on all the replacement light bulbs and ballast for LEDs. That's five grand plus my time. And I got to rent a scissor lift and this and that. So maybe all in, it's whatever amount of money. That's why I need 90 days. I'm not going to ask you to do it. I'm going to ask you to allow me to 
invest in your building, create capital improvements, keyword, to your building. But I would appreciate if I could have some runway during that time of free rent. That will also allow me to get my marketing out for these additional services I'm planning on running in this new suite. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Now, here's where, uh, so originally I was going to do an aggregate lease, but now based on what you said, I, I think that that's a great idea as well. If you want to pay for them separately, that's cool. So if you look on your previous lease, 7% is the renewal. Option not to exceed 7%. If I'm you, I would go at him for the full seven. And literally, so that what it will do, it'll take your rent um, from $9.02 a square foot to $9.65 a square foot. So your rent on that on your first building, the main building you're in now, would go from $4,555 a month to $4,874. I mean, that's a drop in the bucket. That's nothing, right? So give him, be like, dude, I'm going to, I so like, I'm like, based on our previous lease agreement, we stipulated not to exceed seven percent. I will take a full seven percent increase on the on the the six thousand square foot suite. If we can so line these up, okay. So should I only play that card if he's not willing? Or so here's the the so here's one thing I tell people when you negotiate. Um, don't it's give and take. If you're going in, you're like you're take you're at you have a bunch of takes already. Take one. I want to line up my lease. Take two, I want you to give me 90 days of free rent, okay? Now, you're justifying it because you're going to make these improvements, but that's a wash. That's not a give, okay? Gotcha. So you've taken twice, all right? My recommendation is you got to give something. Okay. So make- you, and again, for, I'll be honest with you, man. If you're, like, your business should look at it. I mean, that's less than, th- that's like $300 extra a month. Yeah. And I believe from the intake form you gave me, you've got a really strong profit margin, right? Yeah. Fucking bro, you're you're playing you're not even playing real. Like you're you have like a cheat code right now. You are paying such a low amount of rent based on the market. Yeah. I you you if I were you, because I mean, you know what he could say to you? I mean, at the right now on this lease, the six thousand, he could it's not to exceed seven, right? That was a fuck up on his end, right? So that's the highest you can go. But if that wasn't there, man, he could have you, I mean, he would be 100% within his right to get you up to 12 bucks a square foot. Like, that would be what I would do, right? I even think that 13 is low. So, and I was running comps. I was able, I'm gonna run, I was able to do a peer model and run comps on the area. So he's still below what the rest of the market is. And it's, it's probably because I look, I finally found his portfolio. Is this him, Charles? Yeah. Yeah, so I finally found his portfolio. He's got a lot of properties, just like he said, which again, it's it's just like the franchises. Like if you franchise a Taco Bell, you might make 12% margin on that Taco Bell, which is why you need 15 of them to make any real money. I still, if I'm you and I'm wanting to get my way, that would be a give I'd give because it's that's not costing you. With 300 bucks isn't costing you shit. Yeah. You know, 3,600 bucks a year. Who cares? So that that would be my recommendation on here. So I would go ahead and I would on this site, then we're doing the first one, we'd go up to 965, which is the 7% increase um, per square foot is 4,874. Now in that in your current extension, he did not have any annual increases on you, correct? Not that I know of, no. Yeah, I looked at it. It was because he, I mean, it's, sti- it's stipulated right here. Year one at four five 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 zero and year two at four five five zero. Now my question is though, is what were you paying in triple net fees? I think I sent you a text. I don't. I didn't. See- Nothing. Okay. That's really interesting. So the way it typically works is like there's there's a base rent, and then you pay operating expenses. So generally the tenant is responsible to pay all direct expenses and their pro rata share of real estate taxes, insurance, and common area maintenance. Estimated to be blank. And if you go to your lease, he says the exact same thing here, but he does it in a different way. Base amount used for the insurance price is based on the year 2012. Any increase during the term of this lease will be the leasee's responsibility. So the thing with triple net, which is what you are, but he there's nowhere where he indicates the amount of money you have to pay for that. Anyway, Triple net changes, because remember, that's not something he's charging you. He simply just takes 
his property taxes for that building, his business, his building insurance for that building, and any, any common area maintenance that he has, and he charges you for it. Now, I know in here you're responsible for the icing and the frozen pipes and the blah, 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 and all that shit. So, but we're not, we won't bring this up. Like, obviously, if he's not including any of that, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to put in here and just, I would have you leave us like, hey, I'm responsible. And this is essentially what yours says, except we're not going to add a dollar amount to it in common area maintenance, which shall be subject to annual adjustments, which is exactly what it says in your current lease. Okay, cool. Security deposit, none required. Existing security deposit in the amount of four thousand and fifty is being held from the prior lease agreement. That's at least what it said in your your previous amendment. So fuck it, just let me keep holding on to that. No additional security. You should not have to give a security deposit for the additional space. He yeah. trusts you. He knows you. I think that would be ridiculous. Yeah. Landlord's work. Landlord to provide tenant premises to tenant in as is condition, but with all mechanical, electrical, plumbing systems in good working order. So, have you ever had an HVAC issue where the HVAC broke water heater broke anything no not to the point of didn't work i mean there was a small like the the drip pan on the hvac bent and broke but the unit itself still in good functioning order so no not that i can recall all right you know in your lease you do you i mean generally what i have most owners do is i have them go ahead and do a get an inspection on the property so they get uh, a plumbing a mechanical which is your hvac and in a roof inspection, right? That you use that as leverage. So if like the roofer goes back, like, bro, this spot right here, this is a fucking, this is a hole. You're going to have fucking leaks in here within three months, I guarantee. Then you're able to go to the landlord and we can start negotiating. If you don't want to take that route because you haven't had any issues and I, I mean, have there never been a roof leak or anything? No, I mean, the... Not the building. The fence was super shitty and blew over, and they came and redid the whole fence. Okay. But so if you, again, it, it is, and this is where generally, again, you got to realize when I'm generally doing this, I'm working with the stranger. Like my client doesn't know the landlord, right? Yeah. You already have a good working relationship in there. I would, I would just leave this as is. I don't think you need. You can keep this in here. I just don't think you need to like push. Like I'm gonna go get inspectors to go look at the roof and look at the HVAC and all that to. Because we're doing that to see if there's anything broken or soon to be broken so that we have leverage in our negotiation. Gotcha. Right? But the fact that he's never done you wrong, like he's never stuck you with a fucking $10,000 HVAC bill. No. And you pay for the annual maintenance, right? Yeah. Okay. So you're just going to do the same thing in the next location, all right? Yeah. Um, Any work above and beyond landlord's work shall be tenant's responsibility and subject to the landlord's written approval, Okay. Under no circumstances shall tenants work affect or delay the rent commencement date. So what we would do at the very end of this thing, so exhibit A here is the premises. So we just have an outline of the premises and there. It looks something like that. That's not your premises. And then we'd have tenants work, right? And this is where you would outline everything you're going to do inside of there. So, you know, like install glass, roll up garage doors, right? Like, boom. Replace ballast and fluorescent light bulbs with LED. And now, would this include things that I might want to do a year later? Or is this like an immediate? This would be, these are the things that you're going to do immediately, which is why you're asking for the three months of free rent. Okay. I was going to say, move existing interior office walls. Yeah. So to be honest, like, I don't think that's going to be an immediate thing. It's just the fact that, like, it's only 700 square feet and there's a lot of office space in there. And I mean, if I'm going to be here for three, four, five years, I might say like, Hey, I can get an additional 150, 200 square feet. If I, you know, turn this common area into some space. So I'd like to have the right to do that. And here's the deal. You really got to look at that building and think about this new model. Are you, will that square, will the existing layout work? Or is like, yeah. dude, it won't. I need more square footage. Then you absolutely need to have in here that you are going to demo, knock down those walls. And because here's the thing is, even though it's drywall and they're they're likely, they're, it's just drywall. They're not structural, correct? Yeah, correct. You will have to apply for permits. You'll have to pull a demolition permit. You will have to get inspections. And this is all, all those things cost money. You will have to have a GC. Right. You will have to have an architect draft new plans for the city and get them approved and sealed because inside that drywall is what? Electricity, probably. There's probably outlets in there. So everyone's like, oh, I'm just going to knock down these walls, bro. It, everyone fucking says that. 
until a fire marshal shows up and they have the plans the city has and they're like, where the fuck are the walls that are on these plans? And you're like, uh, well, you know, me and my fucking buddies got a six pack and we fucking knocked them down. Uh, bye bye you're shut down until you get this fixed. Like, you can't do that with municipalities. If you want to make changes to the inside of a building, that is a safety issue, right? There's what we call points of egress. People have to be able to get to fire exits at certain angles. You can't just have offices anywhere you want. You just can't knock them down anytime you want. You have to apply for a demolition permit, show the city the drawings done by an architect, sealed by a licensed architect. This is our new drawing. It's something simple. We're literally just knocking down these walls. The city be like, yeah, that's fine. Of course, sign off on it. You're good. Or they might look at that and say, okay, well, you're knocking down this wall here. You need to have a, a point of egress. I like, I don't, again, I don't know. These things go from very simple to sometimes complicated. And all you're yeah. trying to do is add or remove an office, add or remove a bathroom, whatever it is. Installing a shower. I saw you had that on your list as well. That gets expensive. And I'd be honest with you, man, I would wait until you have people canceling the gym before you spend the money. Yeah, because truth be told, and you saw where, you know, how close the two buildings are like, hey, I've got two showers right yeah, there. Just walk across the fucking hallway. Because here's the thing with water. Again, once you get into plumbing, if there's not already an existing water line and the what they call the, the fitting, the pipe in there has to be large enough. So, for example, I got a warehouse, I got a client right now, San Diego, no bathroom, just a faucet. Well, the piping that is trenched in the cement is like one is a three fourths of an inch. Well, for a shower, it needs to be an inch and a quarter. Just to gut that fucking concrete, rip up that pipe, repipe it with the inch and a quarter, 65,000, and that's without even a toilet or a shower or a sink or anything. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, so I, when you really start fucking around with plumbing, that's when things get expensive. Because where does all that waste go? It goes into the city's line. And if you are now exceeding a certain level, it's what we call tap fee. A city can charge you a tap fee if you're going to go from a three-fourths inch to a one and a quarter, because now you're pumping more shit into the city's sewer system, and they're going to get their fucking payday for that. So all these little things that people don't think of, kind of like, we're like, I'm just adding a shower. Like, it's, it's just, with residential, it's hella easy. Commercial, really difficult. Gotcha. Cool. Then we can scratch the idea of a shower. I mean, there's... All right. Yeah. There. And again, I would wait until... So there, the other thing too, man, I'm not going to lie, with the profit level you have, if I were you, I'd be looking to buy a fucking building. Fuck. I mean, yeah. I don't know how much, I don't know how much cash you have, so I don't know where you are financially and all that, but I mean, I saw that prop, that you're generally the candidate that I'm like, the SBA would fucking go from six to midnight. You've been in business a decade. You've got significant profit. Those are the kind of candidates that get an SBA 504 loan like that. Um, assuming there's no outstanding crazy debt, you don't have bankruptcy or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. If you ever want to talk about that, let me know. But um, yeah, so back up to here. The landlords work, utilities, I'll include this language for right to quiet enjoyment later. Each back, same, this is the same language you currently have. Uh, lay, I put an additional line here. Landlord shall be responsible for replacement of HVAC if failure occurs, not due to tenant neglect. So as long as you keep your maintenance and you keep your records and receipts, if it were to fail, because an HVAC unit for those size buildings can be anywhere from fifteen to thirty, forty thousand, you don't want that bill. Yeah, right? especially since you don't own the property. Parking field—that's just saying that you don't have exclusive rights to parking spaces, which I'm assuming you probably don't currently. No. Yeah, just cut first come first serve. You'd put your hours of operation here. Signage. This is all boilerplate. So I'm assuming, like, I know you said that everyone's got matching facades and green awnings, and I know it looks shitty. But you, he probably won't let you upgrade. I mean, you might be able to ask, but hey, can I upgrade my signage or the facade or something like that? But again, that would be on you is my guess. One thing I'll tell you, there's power in numbers. If you were to go and make friends, and by the way, you should be making friends with fucking everybody because you guys have power. So I got a client about, about two years ago. Landlord's a complete cunt. Wouldn't fucking upgrade anything. Just let things go. I had him. It took him about two months. Go around. And they got an entire petition signed by like 38 tenants at a business complex that they all wanted simply upgrade to the facade and the awnings was specifically very similar to yours, what they wanted and better landscaping. There's weeds growing everywhere or they, no one would renew their lease. So essentially he just created a petition where everyone committed to this. It doesn't really mean anything. 
but it scared the fuck out of landlord. Six months later, everyone had brand new fucking dope little awnings and fucking new construction company. Little Jose's are out there fucking mulching the place. It was great, right? But anyway, powers and numbers, man. And if you become the mayor of this place, you become the guy with the power, right? Think of it like as you're like if there was an HOA and you were the head of the HOA. That keeps you, he always knows he doesn't want to fuck with Corey because Corey has the minds and hearts of the people, the tenants. So, just a little side note. Structure, he's responsible for the structure. That's that same thing in your lease. No early termination. We won't even put that in there because I don't recommend you try to get in that. Don't worry about brokerages and don't worry about that. So again, you would simply delete this bullshit here. Just copy and paste this into your own doc, blah, blah, blah. Um, but these are the big deal points that I was thinking of for you that I'd be looking at. And I'll, I'll add the language in here before I send over to you the right to quiet enjoyment you want to have in there. One other thing that I... Didn't bring up at any point in time. So um, given that there's a lot of office space in there, and I know the that guy, the owner, his daughter, which is their like office manager. I think she's a, she's a member of your gym. I read that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I, I asked her what their take was on subleasing, and she was like, yeah, no problem. Like, we would just have to know who and get it written up. And I do have one potential candidate. It's a member of my gym who runs a mobile physical therapy practice and she wants a space so there's a, a possibility that i have a tenant from day one also a possibility of not so i'm not banking on it sure but i, I like that add in there yeah. so i will add a section in this loi i don't recall whether it's in your but i'll add a right the sublease so okay. you would be a sub landlord she would be a sub tenant you gotcha. get an actual sublease created. Simon said, lease shall not assign this. Le okay, so you can't assign the lease. All right, so currently, yeah. So you're not allowed to do it without consent of the landlord. Gotcha. Yeah. And the beauty is this line here, which consent will not be unreasonably withheld. So it'd be ridiculous if you're like, hey, I'm going to sublease to a physical therapist in this office. That cool. That would be unreasonable for him to withhold that from you. There is no reason. Now, if you're like, hey, I'm going to fucking sublease this to a um, a Korean massage Robert Kraft special type fucking enter enterprise, he'd be like, yeah, that's we're not doing that. And that would not be unreasonable. Sublease is approved. And the sublease rent amount is greater. Uh, I hate that. than the original amount. One half of any increase shall be paid. So I hate that. Um, let's say I couldn't profit off of it. You could, but you'd only be able to make half, whatever the profit is. You'd have to split it with them. Gotcha. Well, yeah. And I, I mean, I, that wouldn't be the case because I'm not going to be renting one office and it covering more than the entire rent. Well, no, no, no. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you, in the sublease approved, the sublease is greater than the original amount, meaning like if you rent it for more than $9 and uh, whatever, 30, whatever we're at, right now, $9 and 65 cents. But that's the thing though. If I'm, if I'm even, if you and me are talking about sublease, you 100% have to, because remember, how big is that office do you think? 10 foot 7 by 11 foot 8. All right, let's go back. Let's let's see what we're learning. Have I showed you this? Have you seen this? Uh, no, I did not. You can send it to me if you want. But so 10, you said 10 by 7? Put, just put 11 by 12. It's kind of, it's close to that. 11 by 12. It's 132 square feet, Corey. Let's go back to lesson one. When the square footage is low, what is the rental amount? High. So if I'm, if you came to me, you're like, Stu, like, I, I got a client I want to, I got someone I want to sublease to. How much should I charge? Well, we'd start at your base at 965. That's the, but like, so she's going to pay significantly more than 965. Okay. And then you'd be like, well, what's the justification for that? Well, it's kind of convenient that this chick has a business inside of a gym with lots of clients coming and going, right? That seems pretty convenient. Yeah. Well, let's say she went and rented a proper office. Think about what office buildings have. They might have really nice lobbies. They might have like coffee areas. They might have like coat storage. They might have valet in the front. All those conveniences increase the cost of the price per square foot. So we would have said, I would probably have you do a rip on that. I'd have you uh, for 130, 132. Dude, for 132 square feet, like that office, I'd probably have you charge in there something. You could probably charge her, if you charge her 300 bucks a month, okay? So 300, that's 3,600 on the year. And what I say, how many square feet is that? 123? I think you said 132. If we did. 132. Then, uh, so, that yeah, to, so that means you'd be charging her 27 bucks a square foot, which is 100% appropriate. Remember, it's because it's small. You have to charge more. 
Hold on. This I'm not I'm not math in the math. You said something about three hundred dollars a month. So take three hundred. So I'm gonna walk you through this. So anytime you're trying to figure this out, take three hundred times it by twelve. What's that? That's your annual rent. Right? Three hundred times twelve. If rent you pay three hundred a month times for in a year, because you would sign a sublease for at least one year at the least. Yeah. Now no. Is 300 an arbitrary number? Where'd 300 come from? That's what I would recommend you charge her. Okay. So 300 a month is what you charge her in rent. Over a year is $3,600, correct? Yeah. Now divide it by the square footage. Gotcha. That's how you figure out price per square foot. Okay. So 300 a month. Gotcha. Yeah, you always take the monthly, multiply by 12, divide it by square footage. Gotcha. So, so then wouldn't I be able to take that price per square foot and multiply it back to the square footage? And that doesn't work though. Well, so what are you trying to figure out now? What's the problem we're trying to solve for? Okay. So for whatever reason, I was thinking like, okay, if it's 132 square feet and it's, am I not doing $9 and 65 cents a square foot? So $2 and that, yes. If you did that, so take, 132 square feet. Yeah. Multiply it by 965, $9.65. 1273. That's a that's annually. Oh, that's what I'm missing. Okay. So that whenever was... you see whenever you see square footage, price per square foot, that is an annual number. Gotcha. Only in California do you ever see bit things listed in price per square foot per month. California's the only fucking wacky ass state that does that. Everyone else does annual. Okay. Cool. So, so let, let's keep this going. And I also, I got a staff meeting at 10, which is in like 10 minutes. Anyways, so 300 a month. Now, what about the fact that, and you kind of alluded to this a little bit, she's going to have access to potential clients. She will have access to the gym facility and all of the training equipment that she otherwise wouldn't if she just had office space. There should be a dollar amount of that, right? Well, there is. Remember what, so remember we needed 3,600 is how much she... 300 a month, 3,600 a year, divided by 123. That's square footage. So gotcha. she's paying $29.26 a square foot. And we already upped it from the what would have been the Correct. So take $29.26, subtract the base of 965. So you're upcharging her $19.61. Gotcha. So you're simply so saying, like, I'm charging an extra 20 bucks a square foot because of the convenience, accessibility. And also, by the way, do you know how fucking hard it is for someone to find? 132 square feet. Like, that's not listed on LoopNet. People yeah. don't list properties that small. Yeah. So, no. to, to be completely honest, for that amount, $300 a month, like, I'd rather have that office myself. Like, that doesn't do a lot. Then, then take it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, going into this, I'm thinking, like, oh, if I'm getting, like, 700 to a grand out of this, which now I, it gets, so here's the thing. This is where, again, I i don't know the tenant, so I'm yeah. putting arbitrary numbers. If you know, like, this broad is bringing in a significant amount of revenue, and you know she, like, what you know what her budget is, she's like, yeah, I'm willing to spend around 700 to $1,000 a month, then fucking start at 700 or $1,000 a month. Don't even worry about price per square foot. Gotcha. Just okay. don't do percentage-based rent. Don't, don't fucking, I get... 10% of your gross sales. Don't do that shit. Yeah, no. You don't need to check someone else's books. That's a headache. Yeah, because I can sign up one more member to cover that 300, and then I got an office space that I can use. There you go. Cool. Awesome. All right. Uh, this has been wildly helpful. Um, I don't know if anyone's told you today, but you're very good at what you do, so I appreciate I it. I appreciate that, man. So I will let me finish up this LOI for you. I'm going to email it over, and then that way you have your deal talking points with your landlord. Okay. And then I will go ahead and then, you know, you got my email and stuff. You got my text, you know, through the CRM. Feel free to hit me back if you have any questions, things like that. If he throws you some curveballs, I'm traveling for the holiday, but I've got, I'll get my phone on me and shit. If I see an email come through, I'm more than happy to get back to you. Cool. So re recap on my next steps. Once I get the LOI. Yeah. Uh, you send it or you just put it into an email format for him, just casually, very informally. Hey, man, listen, I really, again, your whole premise is I, you remember, yes, start with a problem. I have outgrown the space. I was not planning on renewing my lease. Again, these are problems for him. This puts him in fear of loss. But now that that additional space is open up, that would allow me to stay here. What I'm proposing is that we 
take, instead of having two crooked leases that don't line up, we line up the two leases for the space. I've got some deal terms below I'd like to run by you. Please review over the holiday and let me know if you're available after Thanksgiving to chat. Happy Thanksgiving, Bill. Love that. Cool. Awesome, dude. Well, good shit, man. Keep me in the loop. And um, next time I'm fucking around in the Nashville area and I'm uh, by Murphy's Bar, I'll hit you up. I'll come back. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, dude. All right, well, hey, happy Thanksgiving. I appreciate everything, and I will talk to you later. Rock on, dude. Take care. See you. Yeah.